Hey, what's up? It's Jared. Welcome to State of Tech. And today we're going to connect any hard drive that you want to an iPad mini. Now, a while ago, I did a video like this for the iPad Pro, and it's one of the most popular videos on my channel. A lot of people have this issue. They want to be able to expand the storage of their iPad without spending a bunch of money on internal storage. Most of us all have some form of hard drive already. How can we connect it to our iPad to get the most storage possible out of that device? Obviously, plugging it directly into the iPad is not going to work. So what are our options? So uh, I did do a video like this for the iPad Pro. Here's uh, the iPad Pro, um, and I used the same device. Uh, essentially, I'm making this video again because there are questions that people asked that I did not answer in that video, and so I want to make this video uh, better than the previous one and then also talk about the iPad Mini uh, and using it with, uh, with any hard drive that you want. All right, so we have the iPad Mini right here, and I'm super excited about the iPad Mini. I think it's a fantastic device. Um, I'm glad that Apple didn't uh, just forget about it altogether and that they did finally update it. Um, I'm going to do a review of this device. I think there uh, are definitely some things I wish they had done with the iPad Mini, but essentially the iPad Mini is very much like the iPod Touch. It's a device that they don't really have to touch that much because it just continues to sell uh, because it's probably more geared towards um, maybe a parent getting it for their kid or something like that, or maybe a person who doesn't necessarily want the latest in technology. They just want uh, the Apple ecosystem and the price to be low. All right, so uh, besides that, and like I said, I'll do a review of the iPad mini uh, soon, but let's talk about connecting hard drives to this device because uh, unless you spend a bunch of money, you're uh, you know limited to the amount of storage space that you have. And if you want access to all of your movies and all of your music and your documents and stuff like that, and you don't want to spend a bunch of money on cloud storage or internal storage for your device, then you're going to need a device like this RAV Power File Hub here. Now, this little device is actually pretty fantastic. It's not the only one out there on the market, but it is probably one of the better ones that I've came across. There are uh, some others that I've talked about in other videos, but we're going to be talking about the RAV Power File Hub here. And I've got links down in the description below to where you could pick one of these up. They have them on Amazon, of course. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about some hard drives and stuff as well. And those links will be down in the description below. So say you have a hard drive. Maybe you have one like this, an external hard drive that has multiple terabytes in storage. You've been putting images and movies and stuff on it for years. And you just want to be able to watch some movies or view your images or your documents on your iPad mini. Or maybe you have a nice small little solid state drive like this little guy here. This is a Samsung uh, solid state T5. This has one terabyte of storage on it. And I have a couple of those um, that I use quite often. I don't typically use the big hard drives anymore because they're just hard to lug around. Um, usually if I'm using these, it's to archive stuff. And so I, I typically don't use these drives for much other than just backing stuff up and then putting them on the shelf. I do, however, carry these little solid state drives with me everywhere. And sometimes I actually just want to access what's on them on an iPad. So how would I do that? Because you can't plug this directly into an iPad. Even if you had the right adapter, plugging it into the iPad is not going to do anything. Apple shut that down. They made it impossible for you to just plug a hard drive right into the iPad and actually connect to it. Now, there are hard drives that have Wi-Fi built into them, so you could buy one of those hard drives and connect to it that way. Uh, there are some really good ones, and I made some videos on them, but the problem there is that then you have everything all in one uh, device, whereas maybe you already have hard drives and you don't want to buy another one. So with the RAV Power File Hub, it does multiple things. And, uh, you know, RAV Hub or RAV Power has reached out to me since I made my first videos. This is not sponsored. I'm not making another video simply just to do it. Um, I just have things that I want to answer. And then I also just want to show you how all this works. I didn't completely go through the whole setup process last time either, which we're going to do in this video. So this device does more than just allow you to connect hard drives to it. It also acts as a Wi-Fi router, which means that you can uh, connect Wi-Fi to this and then it will broadcast an internet signal to all of your devices. Think about those times where maybe you're in a hotel room, 
you're only uh, given the connection ability to like one device uh, unless you pay money. So you connect this device to the Wi-Fi and then this can broadcast. It, it kind of acts as a internet switch, but a wireless internet switch in that sense. Um, it also can charge a device. It has a battery of its own. So when it's fully charged, it can charge another device. It doesn't have a huge battery in it, but it definitely has a big enough battery in it to give you a little bit of a charge boost. Um, also, you can put an SD card in the side of it, and then if it's connected to your iPad, you can copy files off of that SD card to your iPad, which is pretty awesome. And keep in mind, this doesn't just work with iPads. This also works with uh, phones as well, and not only just Apple devices, but also Android devices as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this thing connected. Uh, so when you turn it on for the first time, um, you can just press the button down for a second and let off, and it's going to actually put it in that power sharing mode. So if we plugged in our, our cable to our iPad, plugged it in here, and then plugged it into the iPad, it would then charge. Uh, however, if we press and hold on the power switch until we start to see some lights flash here, uh, then we are going to actually power up the whole device, and it'll be ready to connect to. There's also a Wi-Fi button on the side here. You can toggle between 2G, 5G, uh, Wi-Fi, or just shut it off altogether. Uh, when both of these lights are lit up, you're getting 2G and 5G. So the difference there is that 5G is a little bit faster, but the distance the signal will travel is not as good as 2G. 2G isn't quite as fast of a transfer, but the signal will travel further. So depending on how close you're going to be to your device, uh, you might choose one over the other. Since I'm really close, uh, I can just connect to the 5G. So we're going to go ahead and unlock our iPad. We're going to open up our settings app and go to the Wi-Fi. And we should start to see the RAV file hub 2G and 5G right here. Remember, if you see one and not the other, it doesn't seem to show up. It might be because one of these lights are not lit. And all you have to do is press and hold the Wi-Fi button on the side until you see those lights change and then it will be connected. So I'm going to tap on 5G. The default password is just a bunch of ones. So just tap on one until the join button shows available. I think it's like seven or eight uh, and then it's ready to go. You'll see that it's connected. While our device is connected to the file hub uh, as it is right now, there's no internet. So it's connecting Wi-Fi to the file hub uh, and now I don't have internet connection to whatever Wi-Fi I was connected to before. Now you're also gonna need the File Hub app that you can get from the App Store. There's a few apps. Uh, the RAV File Hub app is the one that I've been using and it's the one that I recommend. There is another app in there that seems a little bit more graphical in its look, but it hasn't been updated in over a year, whereas this one ha has more recent updates. So uh, we'll just go ahead and choose this one here. So the uh, app is now connected to the device. And since we don't have any hard drives connected, it's essentially not doing anything. Um, let's go into the settings of the app really quick. Um, we have our Wi-Fi settings. It shows you the name of the device. We can actually give it our own customized name. Uh, we can, uh, so we can do that by tapping on SSD, uh, SSID and changing the name. Um, I can also go and uh, change the password as well under security here. Um, you can see here, and we would enter the password and change that. You may want to change that from all ones to something else because it's very common that Wi-Fi devices that come from the factory are either all zeros or all ones. If somebody else just so happened to have the RAV Power app or the RAV File Hub app installed and they guessed at your all ones password and yours was turned on with your hard drive attached, which is highly unlikely, but say that it all happened, somebody could access your files. So I do recommend changing your password uh, so that you can, um, of course, have a little bit more security there. Uh, firmware update, if you had the device connected to your other Wi-Fi, it can check for firmware updates over the internet. Um, and then we have some other options here, uh, such as just logging out of the device, um, internet settings, system settings, and stuff like that. Here is where you would connect it to an internet so that it does provide internet pass-through. So you can see here, I'm seeing now all of the Wi-Fi uh, that's available in my area, and I can actually go and connect it now to a Wi-Fi in my area. So I'm going to go ahead and choose um, 
uh, my Wi-Fi. So I'll go ahead and put in the password here. And now it's going to go ahead and connect. And so this is how you can be connected to the uh, RAV Power File Hub uh, to access your files on your hard drive while still being able to connect to the internet. Now it's going to be producing a internet pass through through de the device into here. So uh, the device is restarting. And so once it restarts, and you can see here, we also have a new icon, which is the internet icon, letting us know that we have uh, internet access here. So I need to make sure that I'm still connected to the RAV file hub, which I am. Um, and then we can go back and everything looks good. And we are now ready to connect a hard drive. So real quick, let's just make sure that it was in fact able to, um, to connect to the internet. We're gonna go ahead and just do a search for state of tech and sure enough there we go so we do have internet even though we're connected to this device awesome that's exactly what we wanted to see so i'm going to open the app back up and we're going to connect a hard drive to it now these hard drives these little solid state drives are self-powered uh the big hard drive here this big seagate is not self-powered. I would, would need to plug it into power in order to use it and then plug the USB into the RAV device. So if you're thinking about, you know, how do I do this in a mobile way so that I don't have to be connected to any power, everything is self-powered, you're going to want to go with a smaller hard drive like this that can be powered by the RAV Power File Hub. So we're going to go ahead and put the uh, big hard drive off to the side because that's something we're not going to use. And uh, we're going to connect to our little hard drive here, a little solid state drive, I mean. Let's open up the ports on the back and plug our drive in. You could see here that there's also a ethernet port on the back. With this ethernet port, if you are somewhere where you don't get uh, Wi-Fi even, you can plug in the, to the ethernet port here and then use this device as essentially a router that will then provide Wi-Fi to your connected devices. So you'll see here something changed on the app really quickly. It's giving me information about the solid state drive that I have connected. It's showing me how much uh, storage space I have, how much is available, and now I can actually connect to the device and view anything. It gives me some quick actions to all videos, photos, or music or whatnot that are on the device, or I could just essentially go into file uh, manager and view everything that's on there. Um, so this drive in particular is one that I keep a lot of my video projects that I'm working on. After I film a video like this, I move it over to here. So I can essentially tap here and go and, uh, and check on anything that's here, any videos, any um, photos, audio, anything that I have on here. So let's just go ahead and tap on this file. This is a very large file, a couple of gigs in size. And you can see it's loading and it's actually streaming it from the hard drive. So it may take a few seconds to get to the point where I can actually start to play because it's such a huge file, but then I can stream directly from this, this device here. I don't have to copy everything over to the iPad in order to use it. I can stream from it. You can see the video is now starting to play. Uh, that's a very large, very large file. Let's go ahead and go back and look just again. That is a 2.2 gigabyte file. So think about your full length feature movies that you may have copied over to your hard drive. Uh, if they are high resolution, they could be two gigs or so, maybe up as many as four gigabytes. And so that process of, of streaming straight from your device, uh, from your drive here uh, is highly possible. So think about copying all of your movies over to one of these little drives. This is a terabyte right here. That's a ton of movies that you can get on there you know, for, uh, I think it's like 300 bucks or something like that for one of these drives. And then you just plug it into this device. You can set this anywhere. I'm thinking this summer when we take our travel trailer out, I've just got this set up. It's just hanging out and we're actually able to watch movies wirelessly, which is pretty awesome. Um, so I can access any files. You can see here that these are like project files from Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, I can go in here and look at uh, images and stuff that I have saved. So for example, um, I have a bunch of like Photoshop files that I might be able to copy over to an app that can use that. I have um, images such as 
uh, you know, some social media images, logos for my company and stuff like that. So you can see, I can just swipe through and view all of those here. If I wanted to do anything with them, such as download them, copy, delete, whatever I wanted to do, I can do that right from within uh, this app right here. There's even multi-select so that I could select multiple files. For example, if I wanted to download those to the iPad so that I wouldn't have to use them while connected. Um, so definitely pretty cool. So you'll notice here that I can also access File Hub plus um, the File Hub uh, media. So anything that's on the File Hub, but I can tap right here to access whatever is on my iPad because you can move content back and forth. So let's go ahead and look at one of those logos here under social networks and um, maybe just this, uh, this Hill Media Group 4K logo here. So with this logo, if I wanted to move this or do anything with it, I can tap right here and it's gonna download it and then I can save it anywhere on my device. So now I can do save to files and uh, it's gonna save, give me the options to choose where I wanna save it. So I could choose on my iPad and then um, there's a RAV file hub folder that was already added. Uh, or uh, of course I can go into the app on my iPad and add any folders that I want there. I can also add it to my iCloud drive. Uh, so if you have a little bit of iCloud storage and you access that between your iPhone, maybe your Mac, you can move stuff over there as well. So not, not too shabby at all. I'm just gonna go ahead and add that to that folder and it has downloaded it and now it is available on my iPad. So if I go to the, uh, the files app on my iPad, files app, you can see that that image is on my iPad. It even says it right there. It is in fact on my iPad, which is uh, pretty cool, pretty cool indeed. So um, let's get out of those apps again and go back to the file hub. So if I wanted to disconnect from this hard drive and perhaps plug in another drive, uh, it's very easy to do that. Um, I just tap on that little icon right there and it's gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect from that drive so that I can uh, safely remove it from my device. So I just need to wait for it to finish thinking um, because it, you, do, you don't wanna just unplug a drive um, automatically see now we have zero zero so I know that the drive the drive is ready to be disconnected we'll go ahead and add the other drive in there and it should take a couple of seconds and then we'll see the information update there and it is now connected and we can access the content from this drive now so this drive has uh, different stuff on it obviously I can go in here and view photos and videos and all of that fun stuff um, and move content over. So the idea here is that it makes it uh, so that you don't have to buy an iPad that has a ton of storage. You can add your own storage and access it as needed. Most of us do not need a ton of storage physically on our iPad. We just need our iPad to have enough room so that we can have the apps that we want on there, maybe one or two movies and some music from time to time. But all of the other stuff that we want to access, we don't have to have it live on our iPad. So of course you could stream a lot more than movies on here. If you wanted to stream music also, you can do that. You essentially would just need to go into a folder that had a bunch of music, tap on that and then hit play and it's streaming. You see how fast that was? Super fast. Now if there's any other music in that folder, I could just tap on the arrow and move on to the next one. So essentially it takes a folder of music and makes a playlist out of it. So as long as you have a folder with a bunch of music tracks in it, you could just hit play. Now these are uh, you know, full size WAV files, so they're bigger than MP3s and they just played easily like that. MP3s are smaller files and they'll play, I mean, even faster. That was extremely fast though. So you can see how quickly this process all works. So a couple of other things that you can do just to finish off this video is actually use this app to back up stuff that's on your device. If you're really trying to stay away from cloud services like Google Photos and there are different options that are out there that give you free photo backup, you could actually use the app here to photo backup and back up all of the images that are on your device. So I can go and back up uh, all 1,959 images that are here that have not been backed up and it will do that. I can also back up my contacts. Uh, and then of course you can take pictures straight through the camera and have them saved on your device, which is kind of interesting. Um, definitely uh, not necessarily a usable feature for me, 
but uh, but kind of cool nonetheless. So there's lots of neat things that you can do here with um, the RAV Power File Hub, uh, more so than just connecting to hard drives. It really is a, a useful tool for you to have uh, along with your iPad, your iPhone, or pretty much any mobile device uh, that you just don't wanna have everything stored directly on. So like I said, I'll link to this down in the uh, description below. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Uh, I tried to make this video a little bit more informational than the previous one, so I hope that you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel here on State of Tech because we're all about trying to find solutions to real world problems such as this. And so uh, you being subscribed helps us do more things like that, and of course, share that content with you. So thanks so much for checking out the video. Make sure to go ahead and like us and follow us on the different social networks, as we will be giving away one of these pretty soon, and you'll need to be following us on our social networks in order to get access to that. So uh, check out those links down in the description. I hope to see you back here soon on State of Tech. Take care.